Kamala Harris, what is she not being criticized for these days? Kamala Harris has been relentlessly criticized for avoiding the press since becoming the Democratic nominee. Fairness to her, she's done a few interviews, most notably the high profile Denabash CNN interview. Some people liked it, some people didn't, some people said it didn't go far enough. Uh, she just announced that she will be doing a local news interview shortly. Lines up with a recent NBC News report on Harris's media strategy, but there is a huge catch to her plan. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but let's give you some context here so you can kind of feel this thing out. The NBC News report, which was published yesterday, stated this. Harris campaign said she plans to do more interviews with local media and battleground states and speak more with her traveling media corps in the um, coming day. So she plans to speak out more. She will also take questions from members of the National Association of Black Journalists with whom former President Donald Trump sat for, um, I don't even know if we could call it an interview. It was um, a clap back, a, a fight, um, snapping, some called it back in the day. Uh, but he sat this summer for that uh, widely criticized both the NABJ and uh, the former president, NBC News with that as well. Today, Harris announced that she will be doing a pre-recorded interview on a local news station in Philadelphia. So you're probably asking, what's the catch here? Bear with us still for a moment. Joe Biden largely, remember, avoided national media before he dropped out of the race. Instead, he focused on interviews with smaller radio shows. Some successful, some not so much. Later found out that the Biden campaign was making demands of those same radio shows. Specifically, they were feeding the interview questions to the host, even requested that certain parts of one interview be removed. July 3rd, Biden did an interview with a radio host named Earl Ingram. That interview aired on the 4th. Ingram admitted the White House sent him a list of questions for the interview, which, I mean, you're the leader of the free world and you can't step into an interview with a radio personality uh, blindly. He asked for those questions, no more. Later, an investigation revealed that immediately after the interview, the campaign called the radio station and asked for two changes. So he had the questions, presumably you had the answers rehearsed, and you still weren't happy. At uh, the removal, in addition to that, I have more blacks in my administration than any other president, all other presidents combined and in major positions, cabinet positions. So that was the one thing that was edited out of the interview. Same month, Biden did an interview with a radio host named Andrea Lawful Sanders. Lawful Sanders admitted on CNN. She also took questions from the Biden White House. I want you to watch this. The questions were sent to me for approval. I approved them. Okay, so the White House sent the questions to you ahead of the interview. Yes. Let me play here a bit of your interview. This is, and you've probably seen it's gotten a lot of attention. This is when he was asked about his accomplishments as president. Let's play it. I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman mm -hmm. to serve with a black president. Okay, so you heard that one. Um, Lawful Sanders, we uh, want to remind you, later fired from her job. Uh, of course, Kamala Harris is not Joe Biden, she's younger. Um, uh, prosecuting attorney is her claim to fame. She's been vice president now for some time, but she has kept on the Biden campaign staff who made some of these decisions. And that is why her decision to stick to local news um, to some is potentially concerning. Um, Cenk, you, you weigh in here first. Um, I think that the <laughs> What bothers me as a journalist is it seems the campaign is seeking out exactly what our weakness is. There's a lot of people who lack experience who think it's okay to take questions from the campaign. And a lot of people who um, can't just do their job and push back. That's what bothers me. But what do you think of this strategy and this reporting? Hey, don't scroll away. Did, did, did. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. I think it's a bad idea. I think you do as much earned media as you can. I think this strategy was devised by the Biden team to hide Biden. But that's partly why we showed you that interview that he did with 
uh, local radio station because there's a good reason to hide Biden, and we all saw the debate, right? Um, now, if you have to hide your candidate, though, he's probably not the right candidate, and that's exactly what we're saying about Biden. Now, in the case of Kamala Harris, she just eviscerated Donald Trump in the debate. Look, in the beginning, I was worried because she had done some word salads, uh, you know, when she was vice president. We talked about it a lot, uh, but she hasn't done that in a long time now, and. You know, I was still a little bit nervous about it before the debate. After the debate, I'm not nervous about it at all. So why would you hide a perfectly good candidate? Go, let her go and make her case to the American people over and over and over again. Oh, We might have one or two negative stories. Yeah, that's called life in the big city. But you'll have 18 positive ones, 28 positive ones, because she's out there making her case. If you have a good case and a good candidate, you should want them out there nonstop. That's my Philosophy, and and by the way, when she doesn't go out, they hold Tim Walls back, and Tim Walls is really mm -hmm. popular and makes a great case. Send them both out. I don't think this is a close call at all, but that's my take. Well, I think, um, and part of what the article showed is that they do plan to uh, specifically focus on like local news stations, which I think could definitely be helpful, especially in the areas uh, where she really needs to win in those swing states. But I think that is as you alluded to now. People, you know, at first it was like, oh, she she might blow the debate, she might blow the interview she did with CNN, or there was kind of a, a, a rocky hesitation before people really could believe in her in a sense of has she proven herself. And up until now, I think that she has. Where the real challenge for her will come is what types of policies she does or doesn't pass and how she actually handles being president. The biggest, most fatal flaw with the Trump campaign, one, it's Donald Trump, and two, He's old news. We've been watching him for almost a decade. There's no new tricks he's going to pull out of the hat. There's nothing new he's going to do. In fact, he's tripling down on everything, the eating cats and eating gooses and dogs. Um, and, and, and he's specifically making sure that he says Haitian immigrants when he does it. Um, so I think ultimately um, the you know uh, Harris Walls campaign is in a good position. If they keep on uh, attacking the ground, they keep on making phone calls, keep on knocking on doors, and you know now's a good time to go do more interviews. But you know, I, I think that something rather catastrophic would have to happen uh, for this to turn around. People know who Trump is at this point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just think that if you want to be the leader of the free world, I get that there's campaign strategy and you want to protect. I mean, this is a sprint, not a marathon, right? This is the strangest election perhaps ever, okay, in the history of our country. Um, well, maybe, yeah, the reality star winning in 2016, I think, is second to this. If you, what possibly could go wrong? So she gets, uh, you know, uh, an outlier who starts talking about, you know, allegations about her previous history and personal life. You, she surely she has an answer for all of that, and she can command the room. Somebody heckles her about Gaza; she's handling that in whichever way she chooses. So I just think it's um it's silly, and I think they're going to local news because, and maybe I'm jaded and biased because that's where I spent much of my career. You can control local news reporters because they're just so happy. They're happy that you are letting them sit there. That's the win for them. They really don't care what they're gonna ask. Yeah, so a lot to say about that. That's a great point that Sharon makes. No, Nobody else is making that point. And it's because it's a little impolite to make that point, but she's spent her life in local news. Sharon gets to make it, she gets to make it no matter what, because this is TYT. But other people would feel bad about offending local news reporters. But yeah, generally speaking, when you go on a local radio show, a regional radio show, a local television station, they're they're gonna that's gonna be the top line in their resume that they interviewed the vice president or a presidential candidate or the next president of the United States. So they don't want to rock that boat at all. You're gonna get the easiest, fluffiest interview of your life, okay? And people know that, especially people in politics, but the people in the audience don't know that. So look, uh in the old days, Tip O'Neill said all politics is local. And people still say that as if it's true. It's not true at all. I, I don't think anybody's seeing those rallies. They're like, oh, what do you mean? Well, she's in the press, she's out there all the time doing rallies. No, the people at the rallies see them. But the Kamala Harris uh, rallies don't produce any crazy news like Trump rallies do. So they never, they lit, in my, what I've seen, they never make the news. So you've got to actually get in front of people. And now all politics is national. Tip O'Neill said that when 
it was like the 60s and 70s and people read the local newspaper and their top source of news was local radio. And now we've got not only TV but internet, all news is national. So I think it's a bad strategy. And remember Donald Trump won in 2016 and he did every interview in the world. And he said crazy things, unhinged things, ridiculous things. But he still won because getting out there in the press and making your case is so important. So I'm positive this is a bad strategy. Whether it's gonna cost them is a different question. And the last thing I'll say though, to be fair to Kamala Harris, she has it much tougher than Donald Trump, why? Because when Donald Trump gets interviewed by mainstream media, yeah, they ask him questions that make him uncomfortable. I think they're actually very, very simple questions. Do you really think that immigrants eat cats and dogs? And he's like, "Oh, you guys are biased. How dare you ask me that question?" And he'll catch all sorts of feelings, start weeping uncontrollably, etc. But he doesn't do a lot of those. The overwhelming majority of the interviews he does is conservative outlets. And conservative outlets, I mean, if you think local news is soft, <laughs> conservative outlets when you have a, somebody like Trump, they're like, "Sir, please tell us how you are the greatest demigod that has ever lived. Please explain it to my audience." Fact check, <laughs> they, they'll join in on the lunatic conspiracy theories. Whereas Kamala Harris doesn't have that on the left. Like if she came on this show, we'd give her the toughest interview in the world. She doesn't have that in mainstream media because the guys at the national level are looking to make a name not just by interviewing the president or potential president, but asking her a question that makes an impact and that gets them in the news. So mainstream media is gonna throw super hard questions at her, conservative media is gonna throw super hard questions at her. And left-wing media usually throws hard questions at her. You can go on Morning Joe, though. that's easy. <laughs> some of Joy Reid, some of the MSNBC shows will give you the same <laughs> free ride as conservative media. But outside of that, she's gonna take, face, generally speaking, tough audiences if she goes past local. These are the things that they never tell you, but that goes into this consideration, just, just so you know the whole context. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I also think there's this thing called being battle tested. And maybe I just want her to be battle tested. But at the end of the day, if she wins this thing, and there's the first 100 days, we want to not for the first time see her her toughness, her, her fight, her pushback, her recovery. We want to see it now so that we can you know be comfortable with it. And when it happens, if she were to win in the first 100 days or whatever, it's not a shock thing. We've, our system's been shocked enough. First with the reality guy who talks about household pets being stolen and eaten. And then with this whole Joe Biden and this weird race. So I would like to see that happen. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.